What is going on everyone and welcome back to the Pez Universe Podcast Season 2 Episode 3 and we've got a really good show for you guys again today or this morning or tonight depending on when you're listening to this podcast but yeah we've got a really good show we're joined by a really good guest who I'll introduce in a second but today we're going to be discussing my club we're going to be discussing feature players we're going to be discussing uh, microtransactions and the future of Pez and the mode and stuff as we usually do but we're also going to be doing a deep dive on Master League because I know a lot of you guys have been asking for it we're going to go in and hone in on Master League so without further ado I will introduce our guest of honour today he's the he's the man with the golden voice in the Pez community really with some brilliant YouTube series ongoing as of now and uh, he's trying to hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube which would be an amazing achievement it is the True Brits Mr. Ricky himself what is going on man how are you doing and is there any crack with you? Yeah, not too much, not too much, same old. Good, good, um, good. Yeah, pleasure to be here again. I know last time we spoke, I think, was in, was it in May? Yeah, it was the ages ago. Seems ages ago now, yeah, it's mad. Well, you you know, you trying to fit us into your busy schedule is always is always hassle. We threw in your, <laughs> we threw in your assistant four times, I think it was, or something like that, so... I know she's clapping. Yeah, it was pretty uh, pretty hectic. And of course, I am joined by my co-host extraordinaire, the better half of the Pez Universe podcast. It is Wes at FC. What's going on, Wes? Oh, again, I'll take being called the better half all day. Uh, I'm not too bad, man. Uh, things are things are good, man. We're uh, we've got plenty to talk about this evening, as I'm sure we will get into. But yeah, definitely. I'm very very much looking forward to uh, hearing Ricky's thoughts on uh, Master League, etc. So uh, should be good fun. Yeah. And on that point, let's jump right in because we don't even we don't even really give an intro into this or whatever. We just go straight into deep end. And I'm going to start with our guest of honor, Ricky. I'm going to ask you about Master League because you are the Master League expert here. I'm pretty much playing more Master League this year than I've ever played. I think compared to my club, um, so I'll probably have a couple of thoughts as well. But I want to ask you with Master League this year, a two part question: Are you enjoying it now? And what do you want to see fixed in the patch this month? All right, sounds good. Um, well, obviously, touch on the first one. Am I enjoying it with Man United? No. <laughs> uh... It's like a trick question. <laughs> that... Yeah, I mean, now I've had a nightmare. I don't know if you've seen it, but I mean, Pogba's been out. I've never had this happen to me in Pez for years <laughs> and years. He's been out for four months. Yeah, I've had a four-month injury in I don't know how long it's been. But, um, you know, it's it's up and down because, you know, there was a lot more cutscenes at the beginning, mm. which made it, you know, a little bit more interesting because it was something new and fresh. But, you know, lately I haven't really been seeing too much. I mean, I had a game against Arsenal, which you would think is a, you know, a relatively big game. Yeah. And it was just played out like it was a normal match. It was, you know, there was no build up. There was nothing. Mm. Um, and, the, you know, gameplay wise, it's been... You know, I don't know. Pez twenty twenty for me is it's one of those like Marmite. You know, you either love it or you hate it. It's <laughs> it's a mixed bag sometimes, and it's it's doing my head in uh, for some aspects of the game, and then I like I love different parts of it as well. Mm. But overall, yeah, it's I mean, when it comes to like the interface, when it comes to sort of the actual mode itself yeah it's better than pez 2018 19 17 because they have added technically a new menu a little bit although i'd still like them to do more there is more cutscenes. there's still i don't think enough sort of risk and reward though you know because you do these press conferences but if if you lose there isn't really you know nothing happens it's yeah. just all a little bit cosmetic mm. um but yeah, so I'm enjoying parts of it, and then there's parts of it that just just does annoy me. Um, but you know, I'm at that age now where I'm I'm not in my twenties anymore. I'm not going to sit and dwell on little things all the time. Mm. It is what it is. You know, every game has its faults. I think it was in the last podcast, well, not the one the one before that with Spoony Pizzas I listened to. You know, and I think Wes had touched on it that you know no game's perfect and never will be, mm. and it's it's true. It's not going to happen. So. You take the good with the bad, but the second question. So yeah, first question is I'm enjoying it uh, sometimes, and sometimes you know you have a bad day. But the second part now, the patch itself, for me, the AI. I think the AI is dumber than it has been for a while. <laughs> like I don't know what's happened here, but they're just. 
and I know it's not my team spirit. I know my team spirit hasn't been great, but for me, team spirit isn't about you know how stupid your AI is. Mm. Team spirit could maybe be because there's not enough chemistry, right? The passes aren't all going to mm. players' feet. Yeah. That isn't my problem. My problem is literally you'll just see players running into each other. Yeah. You know, it's like bumper cars on the field, <laughs> and I don't know what they're doing. Like the responsiveness isn't there. This is something that has to be addressed. Mm next week i believe when it comes out yeah the ai just has to be fixed if they fix the problems there then that you know follows through to online offline it doesn't really matter what you play yeah but they just it can't just be me that sees it that the ai are just all over the place mm. and I, I don't understand there's something broken with them that they need to fix people keep going on about the demo i'm getting annoyed with people going on and on about the demo <laughs> but the demo was the demo it is what it is we're not going to get the demo because there were parts of the demo that I thought were not that great. Mm. So they fixed some of that, but they've broken other parts of it. Yeah. And it's all down to the AI. So for me, that is all I care about right now. Fix yeah. the AI and the game will, will be far, far better. Yeah, I think the AI, we definitely touched on that last week, but it was more kind of a, a my club centric thing. There is, It is a different mm. game offline and mass league compared to online but the ai is still kind of like a current issue between both modes like online or offline because sometimes yeah. the players don't even realize that they're they're meant to be you know trying to win a ball or chase a ball or even as you said ricky it's, it is like bumper car sometimes where it's like you can't get out of the way of a player you've got ai running into each other it's just messy like compared to yeah, a couple of years like even even last year it's kind of hard to remember when pez 2019 was at its worst last year before patches and stuff because obviously the game is going to improve we would hope <laughs> between the next you know between now and christmas time obviously um but do you think like do you think that the the ai in terms of attacking is okay and it's just defending or do you think it's just like all over the pitch like attacking and defending um, I mean, look, I've been playing on Legend a lot, and mm. to be fair, it's actually been all right. You know, I I don't feel like I'm being cheated out of. Yeah. Um. You know, and people keep saying, "Are you playing with the standard patch or, or the standard gameplay?" Yes, I haven't touched anything. Gameplay mm. is the same. Um. But some people think that I'm. You know, it looks different. I don't know. It's a placebo effect half the yeah. time. But I don't think there's a problem with that. It's. It's almost. It is just like loose balls. Yeah. Loose you know. Balls, it's. Yeah. That's the problem. The players should react. They should see a loose ball and run to it. I shouldn't. Ha and also, player switching sometimes is still. Yeah. Like I will literally a few. It's cost me a few goals where I'm, you know, I'm um, taking control of Harry Maguire, and for some reason it won't switch players instantly. So now he's not going to catch a Bamiyang. He's mm. already gone. Mm. So it's that kind of thing that annoys me because I can't do anything, and then I get slagged off for it in the comments. <laughs> I can't defend. <laughs> It's not my fault. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it is. It's simply the AI just not having a brain. Yeah. There is definitely like uh, when the ball goes into these certain situations where it either goes up in the air or it ricochets off one player and then there's like about like a second of a delay or half a second of a delay where it's yeah. like who's going to actually run here? Like what player is locked on like to actually chase the ball? Because I don't think, and it's something that we could bring you in on Weza here as well even though you're not a massive offline player, but I don't think that the actual, you know, the manual kind of control, mm -hmm. like super cancel kind of control where you could literally, like I do it all the time when I want to manually leave a ball, go out for a throw in or whatever and just shield it. Yep. That I don't think is as reactive this year. And I think that causes me a lot of problems as well. Um, I don't know what you think about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, as we we kind of had known, you know, we've known for a, for a fair bit now that obviously Super Cancel is not great online. Mm. Obviously, I've heard that it's it's better offline, which is obviously awesome for for offline players. Um, it's better I going forward. It's better like attacking. Yeah. It's better attacking when you're canceling a shot and stuff. But yeah. defending and that, it is still kind of. And I noticed yeah. that between last week's podcast and this week's, because I've played yeah. a lot of Master League this week. Yeah, well, when you when you even look at the the, the way that the the defenders and or players just generally react, um, the the problem you kind of have is is that if a player is locked on, so for example, in in Ricky's scenario, if he's got Harry Maguire, uh, and Harry Maguire's locked on to the to, to the loose ball, mm. if Aaron Wan Bissaka is in a much better slot, you can't select Aaron Wan Bissaka, yeah. yeah. take Harry Maguire out of the equation, and then play it the way that it's 
instead you the ball has to go to Harry Maguire and it's normally in a scenario which will probably cost you mm. I, I think that certainly it could be looked at because I think it's either a case that they they know that you know they've got the wrong type of player that's on the ball, and then sometimes when it's kind of been like a deflection of like a pass or a shot or of a tackle, both both sets of players don't seem to know where the ball is, and it takes a, like a second or two for them to actually register. Oh, okay, well, we're locked onto this loose ball now, and then you're just kind of contesting it from there. Mm. You know, I, I think that that in itself is a, is a, is its own is its own issue for me. Yeah. And it can happen as well sometimes. I don't know. Have you noticed this, Ricky? But like, do you know when you're when you've got one player you're going forward on an attack, and you've got one player who's in an offside position, and another player that's kind of overlapping him. So you're trying mm-hmm. to pass it, obviously, to the man that's overlapping that's still onside. But it like it's like it automatically like locks on to the offside player to bring him into the action, and then it gets called for offside. Does that ever happen to you? Because it's it's definitely happened to me about four or five times this week alone that I've noticed. Yeah. That. Yeah, I mean, probably not that many, but I, I've seen it. I've also seen it where a player was onside who made the run, but the lino called offside for the guy that was offside, even oh, though he yeah, didn't yeah. touch the ball. Yeah, And it's like, well, well, that's not right. And and also touching on Wes's point there, you know what it's like? It's like there's a... Because, yeah, I've seen that numerous times, and it is annoying, but it's like there's a force field around mm-hmm. the players. Because if Harry Maguire's locked onto the ball... And you know, and he, everyone else leaves it, and they mm. run away. Mm. They run away yeah. from the ball. So it's like there's a force field around the ball, and the only person who can get to it is the person that's you know you're done. Yeah, you're sw- yeah, you're oh, yeah. locked onto. I think there's the most something aw- wrong there. I don't know. Yeah, I was going to say the most awkward bit about that is is that the game. It, say for example, you were the you had the last touch on the ball before it goes like it looks like it's loose. Your team behaves as though you're on the attack so your players will go flying forward but <laughs> your defender will go flying backwards to obviously try and recover the ball but then that leaves you open not only to a counter attack but then it also leaves you completely open to the player that's got the ball back mm. so you're it's almost yeah. like it's and then your your players are nowhere to be seen and by the time your players are there to be seen the ball's already in the back of the net and mm. you're already staring at the console going i hate you for doing this that's that's the you that's <laughs> the kind of wall. yeah controller controller down and off you go like that's literally you know and and i think it's just it's it, it's as it's as it's big of a problem this year as i've seen it in a yeah. while you know, it's 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 not it, you know with PES 2019 and with 18 with 17, you could kind of kind of go. Oh, do you know what? actually the AI isn't that? You know, the AI is always going to be a bit weird and do some weird things, but the frequency in which they do weird things on this game is far bigger than I've ever seen it. You know, in terms of yeah. in terms of just weird things like instead of people using the word script, which obviously I know that we we all well I would say that we all universally hate, but it's like. You're not even at that level of script, and I've just had to explain it on my stream. It's just weird stuff that I can't explain. Yeah, that's that's how I have to say it because it's I can't say it's scripted because it it isn't. It's just weird stuff that the AI decides to do. Like for example, if I'm playing with Liverpool, Kaiju could just go. Oh, actually, um, there's a there's a five yard pass on there uh, to uh, Jordan Henderson. Oh wait, oh Trent Alexander an overlap. Oh, oh well, one he's not in an overlap, and two you're going to try and play a seventy yard pass to a direction that you didn't ask for it to go in <laughs> it's just it, it's it's like i say it's more of a problem i think now that and i suppose to to, to your point as well uh baz you're probably now kind of looking for it in yeah. a sense because oh, you you're do. kind of to see it you can't on like you do yeah. look out for a little bit yeah you definitely yeah. do you can't unsee it so yeah. it, that that's where you kind of get a lot of people that are quite annoyed with it mm. but it's it's a thing as well like i i've played a lot of master league this week and Mm -hmm. i've i found myself kind of seeing patterns where i didn't like that i hadn't seen in pez 18 and pez 19 even with extended play like there's i think i think a lot of the problems are coming from there's there is a lot of more variety this year in terms of like passing the ball and like overlapping and stuff that when it when it does work you can play some like really nice football and i think that that's what kind of happens where it's like Sometimes I think the AI, like you mentioned, the force field effect kind of, and I know exactly how you're trying to describe that, but I think sometimes the AI wants you to, it kind of lets things play out rather than having a interception or rather than two players running to the ball or something. I think they just need to tweak it a little bit to make it not as kind of noticeable because at the moment it's like, 
sometimes the players feel like puppets on strings rather than total freedom that you can actually yeah. do what you want and switch whoever you want um because there should be no way if you're chasing a ball with you know somebody like benzema who's who's not as fast as somebody like hazard or say something like that you should be able to switch off benzema even though he's closer to the ball at one point to go with hazard that would be faster when he gets the ball if you know what i mean and yeah. at the moment you can't mm. really do that without literally fighting with the pad like so yeah um, and yeah. you can't do it online at all you can do it in yeah. master league a little bit um but online it's extremely hard um and like ricky would you like would you would you say that this is one of the best like pez games from a core gameplay point of view like do you see yourself playing this like until christmas happily or like are you kind of like anxiously waiting the patch and being like you know like oh only one more week for the patch i need to see how it is or are you kind of like tipping away as you said like you're not you're not going to be looking for every single under the microscope problem with the game um are you kind of happy with the core gameplay this year um yeah i mean pretty much apart that that is my only issue really uh it's it's the ai and it's you know, the, it's like it's not programmed right. That's the problem. The coding. I mean, look, I'll give credit to FIFA and EA. Right, that game is when it comes to that responsiveness and yeah. players reacting. AI very smart. It works well. Now, there's a lot of stupid stuff that happens on FIFA. Don't get me wrong. You see videos all the time, but it's that's mainly my only problem. So yeah, I am waiting for the patch a, quite a bit because mm -hmm. I can't keep dealing with this because it's it wouldn't it wouldn't matter if if I wasn't conceding goals from it or things weren't happening that cost me games, but they yeah. are, you know, and it just becomes infuriating when it keeps happening and happening. Mm. And it also partly down could be because my spirit is crap right now. Once Pogba's back, <laughs> I might start winning games again yeah. and, and enjoying it, right? Which is fine. I don't mind a struggle. I, I enjoy a struggle in Master League. I don't want to win every single game, which is why my Master Leagues are always all over the place mm. because I don't win 38 games out of 38. I might lose half of them. It is what it is. It yeah. happens. So, yeah, I core wise, look, when PES 2019 came out, major problems. I mean, the, there was the low bug cross, the goalies wouldn't come out, there were other issues. This came out, and, you know, it didn't have those issues, right? You can score from long range, you can beat the goalies. They're not superhuman. It's just that AI yeah. need tweaking it can't be that difficult i mean it might be i'm not a programmer but i yeah. honestly if we talk about the demo i didn't see this as much in the demo mm. um yeah there was more physicality in the demo etc and konami came out and said well when you fix one thing you try and find a balance i understand that yes you've got to find a balance and a fine line but you've got to fix the core problems love you know the ai and if they do like i said this game will be phenomenal mm. um yeah it's so i think it's better being an unreal like game yeah it like is at the moment yeah, it's, a good, it it's is. a good game but i think it's so close to being one of the best like sports games ever so I, I like it's it's so hard as well because like wes you obviously then just to bring you in you've got a complete different like you've a di completely different experience with playing my club and stuff and i know we oh, touched on yeah. this last year last week with with Vern and stuff um so we won't spend too much time talking about it but in terms of the patch from my club's point of view like what what is the the top thing you want to see um obviously if responsiveness is this is what you want to see as well um it'll be a short point but if there's something else that you would like would like to see what is it like i i i, I kind of echo the, the two sentiments there i think that it's the smartness and and the the choice or the choices that the ai make at least when you're in possession and out of possession mm. And it is, and it is the responsiveness. I don't want to have it where I. It feels like I press a button, and then three seconds later, I see an action. Yeah. It needs to be yeah. like instant, not an instantaneous, but it's again to echo Ricky's point. When you play FIFA, you press a button, and it's a response. Yeah. There's immediate response. Mm. There's no, there's no. Oh, I've got to wait and see. You know, there's like some weird animation where it kind of stutters, or there's that weird run animation where it kind of looks like your player's looking at the ball, and then he finally does something. By the time that happens, it's too late. There's there's a, a, a kind of a vast quantity of things that that would be done. But in terms of the the, I'd say the two, it's it's the smartness of the AI, 
and it's it's your responsiveness. Uh, and then maybe chuck in there just as a bonus ball is loose ball situations. Mm. No, you know you need to know what's happening in a loose ball situation. You need to at least have some element of okay, well I can I can go I know what player's looking at the ball because in the way that the lock on system works on pairs as we just mentioned, it works on a one person's locked onto the ball at any one time. Mm. And the problem is, is that if you don't know which one's locked on, you then can't go and get the ball. And by the time you do know, the chance is gone. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I mean, we'll get on to to other things which I'm sure we will in a second in terms of kind of content and, yeah. and things of that nature but in terms of from a gameplay standpoint that's where I'd, I'd like to, to see it progress mm. and like Ricky just to just to kind of before we finish up on my club a bit but well we'll kind of touch back on it again throughout the podcast but just in terms of like the transfer market this year and stuff like that like off the pitch have you like are you happy with those changes I know the cutscenes are a bit kind of superficial where they're kind of like you know where do you want to come okay we need to come top six and then you finish like 15th and they're like oh well done do you know what i mean so <laughs> it's kind of like all right yeah but, um like in terms of the transfer market which the salary and the transfer market and the budgets and the actual players movement as in last year when the game came out like in the first window before you'd even played a match Salah might have moved to Man City and like Firmino might have moved to Man United or whatever and it's like what the hell mm -hmm. whereas in this year you've obviously you know you're obviously playing massively quite in depth and you go into a lot of depth in your series um, like what do you think of that like off the pitch in terms of like the transfer market the way the players move and stuff do you think that's way better or is it what do you think yeah, yeah. I, no, I definitely think it's better. Last year, actually, PES 2019, I believe uh, they had such an issue where I think I remember seeing Crystal Palace had sold all their players. Mm, yeah. And they had like, oh, there was a problem, wasn't there? Just yeah. had goalies all on their, the bench. All or their outfield something. players, all their midfielders yeah. and forwards that you sell. They so, just keep defenders yeah. and goalies. So. Exactly. Luckily, we haven't got that problem. Um, yeah, so the transfer is definitely probably the best it's been. Still not a fan of these release fees, though. Okay. Um, they do my head in because <laughs> it's like I'm offering someone a contract and unless it, it just doesn't, it, it still doesn't make sense because it's like, okay, you purchase someone like, I don't know who De Bruyne or something. Mm. And with a release fee, you're like 75% chance of getting him. As soon as you take off the release fee, 0%. Mm. It's like, why do I have to put a release fee for him? It doesn't, it doesn't, not every plan. It's like every player has it. Mm. Like, I can yeah. understand Messi having one, sure, a few hundred million. Yeah, okay. But, like, lower-rated players, they shouldn't be having it. Um, so, definitely, yeah, transfer-wise, they've, they've improved. It's still there to be improved more. Yeah. Um, I think Konami need to be a little bit more transparent still with what they're going to put out in Marsley because things were said that I personally thought were going to be slightly different than they were, such as the transfer budget to start master league i thought you could manually pick a transfer budget i didn't know the way they worded it that it was basically like do you want like low medium high yeah. etc um also transfer wise i put it on fairly low you know i've had robin van persie go to arsenal mm. like <laughs> what's yeah. happened there yeah. you know it's uh <laughs> there's still some I, crazy I crazy stuff that happens in it all right it's just not as frequent but, i don't think no, I know. But, you know, it happens in FIFA as well. Yeah. You get some stupid transfers happening. I know it's difficult to program it with so many different algorithms in a game. Mm. So, you know, fine. I put it on fairly low and there hasn't been anything too drastic, but I've still seen some unlikely, you know, like a rival player will go to another rival club. That yeah. would just, it wouldn't make sense. Mm. Um, but yeah, as I say, certainly Mars League this year is the best that I've seen it. They have something to build upon here. They just need to work on well on the pitch as well but yeah there is still more that that i do i do want to see i don't know if you can bring in rpg elements in a master league you know mm -hmm. something just to keep you engaged off the field you mm -hmm. know i feel like in fifa you can do so much off the field when it comes to your team whereas in pairs it's very limited you know even like training the players it's kind of very mundane and like mm, it's a bit of a chore um but, i mean i've got you know, we've all got accustomed to it because that's the way it's been. Mm. But yeah, overall, it's it's better. It's the best it's probably been. Um, and we'll just—I know they have a three-year plan, so we'll see what they do next year. Yeah. Mm. 
it's definitely it's definitely progress anyway compared to where Master yeah. was like last year and for the last mm -hmm. couple of years. I mean, the only RPG elements they ever brought into Pez went down like a lead balloon. And I don't know, do you remember the time they brought in the boosts? Do you know the oh, like, God. tribute yeah. boosts? <laughs> so like, we need to be very careful. It's like with yeah, anything. Yeah, that's true. It's 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 something that I've kind of spoken about like a bit before as well, where it's like, and we will get into this because it's probably going to be our next point um, mm -hmm. with people being happy and stuff. It's a nice segue in, but people going back to the demo and bringing this point that I'm saying here of like they did try to do that type of RPG style before where for people listening that mightn't understand or might know what we're talking about that are new to the series or whatever they pretty much brought it in that you could unlock these like pairs of boots like certain pairs of boots and say, yeah. Adidas Predators them. would have like plus 10 on your explosive power um, and like within a season you could literally just strap on a pair of boots and a couple of other boosts to yeah. like any of your center forwards if he was 70 rated and he'd have like 99 pace or 99 explosive power or whatever so it just made a bit of a like a joke out of it some people loved it some people absolutely like thought it was the biggest joke of all time um, so they have like obviously tried to bring in some sort of RPG elements and then like <laughs> it's just like with people right like and I know what you guys are saying there and especially you Ricky I know what when you talk about RPG elements I know exactly what you mean by saying that because I kind of know like I know you do you know what I mean I know how you think a little bit yeah. and Wesley you're kind of the same but like people need to be very careful about how they like what they look for because it's like with the demo people go on and on and on and on and on about the demo as if it was like the best game ever and that's fine if you taught that if you're listening and you think that the demo is the most perfect sports game ever that's fair enough but there were some people that didn't enjoy the demo and there were some people that actually prefer the real game now so it's kind of like mm. a lot of the feedback that came from the demo into the real game kind of in my opinion negatively impacted the real game the final like retail version because the mm -hmm. physicality went down because they were giving away too many like freeze per game and people were giving out about the rest blown for freeze all over the place whereas now you can have a fucking mma match on the pitch and <laughs> the ref doesn't blow the whistle and that all came from feedback because they came out and said yeah. it on the facebook that they tried to find a balance between the demo when people were complaining about the physicality and then they turned it down a little bit for the real version. And now people, some people are loving the fact that they can go five or six games on my club where there's only one foul or two fouls in five or six games. And yeah. then there's people like maybe me and you, Ricky, that are like, you know, I want to, if I'm playing a derby match, if I'm United and I'm playing City or Arsenal, I want their centre halves, you know, bullying Rashford and fouling, picking up yellow cards and silly last, you know, last ditch cha 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 challenges and stuff. Um, yeah. So it's kind of like, do you think? And I'll throw this to I'll throw this to you, Ricky. Do you think that people are ever going to be happy? Like, do you think that it's just an like it's just an ever-ending battle of people? People, there's going to be some people that will be happy with what they get, and they'll just take the flaws and you know play a couple of games after work, you know, and that's it. They don't look at it too deeply. Then there's going to be people that like complain about every single thing, and then mm -hmm. like there's going to be people that don't even know what they're complaining about they just pick something new to complain about like how do you like how do you how do you think about that like what do you think should be the way forward um i mean yeah you're not gonna please everyone the problem is right is if you're if you're it's like a review how many negative reviews are there tons of them because mm. if you're not happy you leave a review if mm. you like a product you generally don't say too much so the people that are negative about a game are always going to come out of the woodwork they're always going to complain about stuff um, but I think you can tell the difference with someone who's constructively criticizing a game mm. as opposed to someone who's just coming in trolling, you know, in all caps lock and just to set complete <laughs> nonsense. You know, it's like, mate, you're not even making a valid point and yeah. I can't take you seriously because you're in all caps anyway. Yeah. So I, I think you just have to try and find a middle ground of people that, look, there are respectful people out there, right? Can I mean, know the influencers, the people that have gone to events, they've played the game. They should be listening to them than as opposed to a random person that's played, you know, FIFA for 10 years and suddenly he's come to Pez and he doesn't like it. Mm. Of course he's not going to like it. It's a different game. It's mm. a different style. You just have to try and find a way of, you know, getting the people that 
have played the game and they understand the game and they want the best for it, you know, as opposed to people that just troll. It's impossible. You're never going to win in that regard because everyone has an opinion. Some people like this, some people like that. So everyone's always going to be in a, a, in a pickle in that regard. I really don't know, but no, no one's, you're never going to get hundred percent people happy. Um, but that's why we have so many different games mm. to just, you know, enjoy a different variety of, of stuff. And, and this is another point I actually want before we move on. Defending in pairs is too easy. You know, that's another problem. It's mm. it's now it's literally hold down the button and the player does the work for you. Yeah. yeah. So there's no actual skill gap when it comes to defending. Um, but whereas on FIFA, the demo as well though, because people complain yeah, that de- defending was too easy, too was yeah. too difficult. No, it wasn't. Leave it alone. Let people learn. You know what I mean? Like FIFA yeah. is very very hard to defend. Yes. Like because it's so <laughs> responsive. As soon as you turn, if you make a long a wrong ditch challenge, that's it. He's gone. He's mm. done. Whereas on Pez right now, I can hold square and get literally three players to crowd him round, win the ball back, and then we're off and running. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think they just can I need to take a bit of a gamble. Let people learn how to play the game. If you don't like it, then fine. Go and play something else. You can't right now because FIFA's got the same defending mechanics, so you're screwed. Mm. But <laughs> Everyone will learn it. Everyone will enjoy it. Yeah. You know, it's, and also, this is us. I was coming up with an idea. You know, the RPG thing, this is something very simple they could put in, is simply ranking up your manager. You know what I mean? So okay. if you win a match, you get points. Those points go into experience and you get a new ranking. You know, and it levels up like a car game. Mm, you need yeah, to speed. Yeah. And if you get to a certain level, here's another five, five million for transfers. I don't know, something like yeah. that to give you an incentive to keep playing and leveling up and stuff. That's kind of the way I was going as opposed to the whole boot thing, which yeah. was a disaster. Yeah, that was, so that's my that was dangerous back then. Dangerous ideas. Mm. Fucking hell. Yeah. Well, like, just, to, just to kind of ask you then as well the same question, like, do you think people, speaking about the demo there, like there was about three or four things that they changed from the demo. Not changed totally, but they did tweak, you know, that people found difficult in the demo or that they didn't really like and then now in the real version of the game and especially because you obviously play a lot of my club you see it most of all do you think that they do you agree with ricky that they just need to pick a direction and say look this is this isn't this isn't pick up and play in terms of like you're defending and you're not going to be an all-star defender at the start or score in worldies there is a bit of a learning curve to it like do you think that would backfire on konami or do you think they should do it no, I, I, I'm i very much the opinion that they need to pick a direction. They need to stick to it. Mm. Don't don't go down the route of trying to imitate FIFA. Don't go down the route of trying to imitate any other game. Mm. Be, be a game of, of Pro Evo, because as we remember it back in the day and, and all the rest of it and all the nostalgia bits of it, is that Pez used to be the challenging game. You used to have to be thinking about what you were doing. Mm. And as Ricky said, at the moment, you just kind of hold a button and then... The, the kind of the game sorts itself out. Yeah. What I would say is that although we talk about people not necessarily being happy, uh, or, or in some instances not being, you know, not always being happy, I think at the same time there are some very valid concerns going on within the community right now. And I think to be fair, we're probably, yeah, you know, we would probably be remiss to not mention some of the stuff that's going on right now because mm. there's some very, there's some very honest opinions out there, and I am. You know, I, I'm obviously quick, quick with my own opinions, but I, you know, I'm sure we'll get on to that. But I, I think it's 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 getting to a bit of a crunch stage now, where people are kind of starting to question exactly where this game's going. Mm. Yeah, you know, from, it's, from it, especially it, from like a, it's definitely uh, it's definitely, and that's that's kind of brings us on to our next point because I do want to ask you both about the coin only agent, obviously this week, which dropped. Like at time of recording, it's. 17th of October, so the yep. thurs it's Thursday, yeah, today. Sorry, like, yeah, yeah, today is uh, Thursday. Just having a brain fart here. <laughs> but, um, we have to film in on this one. I'm touch my club in. Yeah, six so years. pretty much, pretty much, Wes will explain it best because he puts it, summarizes it perfectly. Go on, Wes. Yeah, let you have so, the floor. So, so essentially, what uh, you know, it's it's great, good news. We have, we we have legends. Um, we've got Parchi Sung and we've got David Beckham, which is great. You know, we finally have legends in the game. Problem is, they are stuck behind a coin-only agent. Not to mention that they're stuck in a pool of 102 people. 
Mm. Now, so pretty now, much the only way you can open the agents is no GP, Ricky. It's just pretty much just the coins. Just coins. Yeah, and what well, they yeah. like ten bucks for how much? Uh, ten bucks. About ten... No, about like two thousand coins, is it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, so there's a hundred and two, so you'd have to spend. You'd have to, to spend about ten k. So you'd have ten k, ten k coins. Ten k coins probably rounds to about sixty quid, or sixty sixty quid in our, in our money. But that probably be what, I don't know how much that'd be in books. But be about like, I think yeah. the point, the point, the point that I'm I would love to make right here, right now. And I know that I've mentioned FIFA so much on this podcast, and I know that I've mentioned the fact that of how you know you can actually grind towards players in a team, but that there is not the way to go about it they might ch- they may change it in you know in the three days you know uh, you know we, we might have thursday to sunday might be you know it might have the gp in it but the fact that you've launched it on the monday where you've kind of could easily trigger people which we saw plenty of on social media today and we saw plenty across the board and rightfully so because what message are you sending your to, to your consumer i'll tell you what see the these two legends that you probably adore if you're Man United fans, because I'm, you know, I wasn't a Man United fan, but I love Park Sung because mm. he'd run all day for you. He was the mm-hmm. Liverpool, he was the, the, you know, he was Man United's answer to Dirk Carrick for Liverpool. He'd run all day, he'd, you know, he'd do jobs, he'd do all the rest of it. Same with Bex. Bex is bona fide Man United legend, without a shadow of a doubt. If you mm-hmm. are a 90s kid or a 2000s kid and you grew up watching Beckham, you, you might be into pairs going, oh, hey, Actually, this is a great idea. I can go and get him. You need to have an option to be able to grind players. In the same week that you've got FIFA who've released their their icon swaps where basically you earn players by playing the game and then you can trade those in for a legend. So, for example, for playing the game, I've managed to get six players and now I have a legend Peter Schmeichel in goal for me. Mm. Just for playing the game. Mm. Instead, now the signal coming out is, or at least, again, how it's looking to the consumer is is great we have to put money into the game and more importantly they're not really that bothered if if we do you know they're not really bothered if we do or we don't mm. uh you know we'll probably have pez light in a couple months time you've got the game you know the legend game that's already on sale in the psn store it's just you know what why did you know you've got so you probably have some fans sitting there well why did a pre-order if it's th- you know 38 percent off after you know, a month of being out. Why did I pre-order it? Mm. Well, I, like, I, I, I was watching one of your videos, Ricky, actually there. I don't know what video exactly it was. You'll know, but you were kind of mentioning this about, um, you know, discounts in the game, obviously getting special offers and stuff. Like, yeah. I kind of found myself agreeing with your video. I thought it was an excellent video because a lot of what you were saying is how I look at it. And I'm kind of, with this as well, Wes, like, I... I feel differently to you about it, but it's it's not it's not in a direct like kind of I think what you're talking is like nonsense type of like you know that's not how I feel about it. I just mm-hmm. don't see the big issue with wanting to get the players that is a kind only agent. Like it, it to me, this is just me, and it's a personal thing. Whereas it's like if I don't want to spend money on the agent it doesn't matter who's in that agent to me. Like, I don't... Like, if I'm not going to spend money on it, I'm not going to spend money on it. Like, that's it. Now, maybe that's only because... Like, if Roy Keane was in that agent, I would spend money on it. Like, I would be like, I don't care if it's going to cost me 50 quid to get Roy Keane here. I yeah. just want Roy Keane. But that's my decision. You know what I mean? That's True. my... You know what I'm saying? And, like, True. I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. And mm-hmm. sometimes, like, obviously on this podcast like we need to have different opinions on it and me and you usually do so it's good but like i'm not disagreeing what you're saying saying that you're you know like wrong to say what you're saying because i know exactly where you're coming from and you're you're right much saying that there shouldn't be a paywall that you should be able to sit down there and grind 24 hours a day if you want save up your gp and spin until your heart's content and if you spin 100 balls and you get you don't get and there's two balls left and you don't get him tough shit like at least you've had the yeah. opportunity to do it that's fine yeah but what i i just don't see i personally don't see the big issue and it's like the game is going to be you know there's going to be plenty more chances to get this you get your free my club coins all the time like bex and party song probably wouldn't get into 90 percent of teams in my club anyway i just True. The, the featured players have mm. completely imbalanced the game i have a yeah. way bigger issue with the featured players than i have with coin only agents um, yeah. 
that's just my opinion. I'm not directly disagreeing yeah. with you because I'm kind of making a counterpoint of it's not a direct, you know, thing. Yeah. Like, okay, I yeah. think that the featured players are a much bigger issue. Like, I would, if it was me, I would remove the featured players and have kind agents all the time. And I would be happy to just grind my GP for the normal boxes and say, look, I don't need that player because I have featured, you know, mm-hmm. whoever in my center half. Like, everyone I play has featured Van Dyke and featured yeah. Delict at the back anyway. So it's kind of like, you know, or they have Modric in midfield and they have Hazard, Neymar, Ronaldo, who, you know, you, know, you name it. Like, yeah. so it's like, yeah. why you bother whether you get Parchi song? Like... But you know what that's I'm saying? but that that yeah no no I get where you're coming from there. What I would say is my to well would be my counterpoint is that you, you're with legends as a whole, they they are on nostalgia. You know, we saw it last year with Adriano in terms of they played on nostalgia of he's got 99 sharp power. It's just like Pez Six, which obviously has an emotional tie to the game. Yeah, okay. the same thing goes with these legends. Is the case of if you've got great you know for example take it uh, as you know as Sep. We, we know Sepp's love affair with Francesco Totti, <laughs> right? When they release Totti, which they will, he will go ham yeah. for those agents. That's yeah. not a bad thing. That, again, like we said, it's down to choice. Mm. What I would say, though, is that they have to be incredibly careful and, moreover, incredibly responsible with how they do this mm. because there are people out there with gambling problems. I know it's kind of a hard, you know, it's a harsh thing to, to kind of talk about. There are people out there with gambling problems as we touched on the podcast last week there are people with kind of mental health issues that may go do you know what i need this player to make my you know to make my day and you stick coins in and you go actually i didn't get him that time i'll go again and i'll go again and i'll go again and it's you are you're just you, you know you're you're kind of selling coins based on nostalgia mm. and and they have to be very careful i'm not saying that you know Oh, they should be, you know, that they should be, you know, shutting down the game or whatever. But they have to be very responsible in how they're doing it. There should be a way that you go and do a grindable version of it. We touched on it last week with Vern with yeah. legend, legend legend challenges. Ages, yeah. What what would have been the problem with that? What would yeah, have been the they problem? Could still do that. Like that's that's what I'm saying. Like the game isn't but, the game is it's your choice. It, it, like and I'll bring you in, Ricky, as well. I don't know how you feel about this because <laughs> I don't. I I know you don't play in my club a lot, but obviously you can inject or import the legends that you get in my club into your master league so like would that be yeah. so i know you go for realism and that's you know you have one of the most realistic kind of experiences with your commentary and stuff in the master league and that it's just professional quality but like would you have any interest in if master league just say like next week konami decide to come out and they say right we're going to have a manchester united legends pack there's going to be 15 legends in it it's coin only and there's going to be the current United squad there's going to be all the legends and there's going to be 50 other players in it and it's like would you actually have an interest in you know buying coins to actually get those players mm-hmm. or would it be something that it's like Ugh, I'm not really bothered like that much about it yeah I mean yeah especially Man United legends you know I'm a United fan through and through I watch Cantona and all that so mm-hmm. yeah I would love to have someone like that but no, is is it really going to entice me as an offline guy to say, you know what, I'll give my club a shot? No, that's that's not going to make me look. I've got no problem spending money. I have a mobile game that I've probably spent like two hundred bucks on. It's bad. <laughs> I've been playing it for like a year, but that's golf game, you know, anyway, guaranteed. No, it's not. It's that Marvel game. It's, oh, it's sure. brilliant. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a chore. It's a grind. But you know, the thing is now, this it's everything online is is becoming like a you know, an RNG, random numbers generator, right? Mm -hmm. If you get a a loot box, it's all random. FIFA, opening packs, it's random. You never know who you're going to get. I mean, why not have the legends in two options? So have a GP version where you have less chance of getting him. Yeah, I'm down for that. Or have a coin one where you have more chance of getting him, but you're spending money. Mm. You know what I mean? Give two options. There you go. Something that I think they might just try this out um, and literally see how it goes. And like yeah. Wesley says, they may just go back to how they were doing. If no one's buying this, and there are still going to be people buying it, then and they'll just go back to what they did. And that's kind of kind of leans into the point, you know, in terms of when we were talking, kind of an overarching point about whether people are still happy. The you know, for, you know, as much as we we belly ache about the game, and as much as we're moaning about the game. We'll still stream it. We'll still do content. We'll still do kits. We'll still do everything that we were doing before, except we'll just, you know, 
you, 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 you're just going to keep doing what you were doing. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely, definitely something delicate because they do need to not alienate the player that's sitting down to grind either. Like that, there, there does. <sighs> There does need to be a grind element to my club, whereas now I I think this is the first year where I'm kind of like I have a fairly okay team. Like I've opened a lot of the featured players, and it's like any player I want to get is is going to be just like a personal choice. I don't really need him as an upgrade to my squad because yeah, you know, and I don't even have a good team. I've barely you know I've barely opened that many balls compared to other people. Um, mm -hmm. But it's like who's going to replace him? Well, it's just going to be a personal choice. You know, so I do think that they do they do need to strike a delicate balance, but I think this will be something that we could put on the back burner and look at it as a whole, like in a couple of months' time. Because I I agree with Ricky. I think that they're trialing out certain things. What's going to go down, you know, with the fans? What's not going to go down with the fans? Um, yeah, which is, and yeah. I definitely definitely think that they'll have some really <clears throat> interesting campaigns coming. Um, they always do, like closer to Christmas and stuff, with the you know. I don't know is it twelve days of Christmas or whatever it is that they do, um, with the login bonuses and stuff. But um yeah. yeah, I mean it is a delicate one, but just to switch switch it up a bit, if I was to ask you what your favourite moment so far in Pez twenty twenty has been. <laughs> Switching it up completely, just going away from everything. He didn't even spot. tell me that question before yeah, we started. Just <laughs> on the spot. I had no chance of thinking about this one. Um, <laughs> That's what we like to do from time to time. We'll throw a curveball. Best moment? Whether it's a I can't even remember win now. Or a goal or a, like video you stream oh. or a video you recorded or well, like what's just been your favorite like moment where you like were like I actually I'm actually loving this right now. I mean, I did have a screamer, and yeah, that's actually the the, the stream that I did with the classic file. Mm. Didn't didn't save, and I scored an absolute screamer, like forty <laughs> yards with Bobby Charlton. Nice. I mean, it was an absolute rocket, and I went, I think it went mental on stream. But <laughs> you know, I, it's it's those feelings, you know what yeah. I mean? It's it's the long range, and that's why I'll always play pairs over FIFA because I don't get that when I play FIFA because it's yeah. just like, okay, I scored, but. No, there's been a couple of moments. I mean, it's even like dribbling with the ball and seeing players like pushing each other players out the way, you know, yeah. and it looks so realistic. And even yesterday playing with uh, against Arsenal, the way Aubameyang stuck his foot out to try and read a pass, it looks so natural, mm. you know, and we, we kind of tend to forget about these things that outside of the niggles and the problems, the fundamentals of this game is still really well done. The yeah. physics this year as well. I have enjoyed the physics a lot more than ever before like the way the ball spins and the trajectory of it yeah, is definitely. is really cool when you see it um so yeah i mean i've had a few different ones but definitely that finish from from bobby was an absolute belter <laughs> and what about you wes uh well i think i personally think it's it's a pretty easy one for me um it actually happened during the Your the stream. the 24 hour yeah it yeah. happened between, in in the 24 hour stream um was the the roll free kick which actually got uh, clipped um on twitch where basically obviously you can set your obviously you can set your free kick up to have a secondary player mm. uh me thinking that somebody was going to manual keeper turns out they didn't at the time at the time i thought they had but they turns out they didn't um and basically sergio ramos was my second kick taker and he absolutely rifled one into the top corner <laughs> and it was like and nice. i was just it was absolutely golden. It was an absolute. But you're like that, Sergio Ramos. It's like disbelief. Yeah. For, I can't believe he's pinged that top bins. Mm. Like how? You know, it was it was quite bizarre. But yeah, in terms of in terms of favorite moments, obviously it would have to be the stream. But definitely one moment from the stream was that free kick and the look on Lazar's face when he realised I'd scored. <laughs> Because he, he, he obviously you wouldn't have saw him on the camera at the time, but it was just kind of like the um, the Stewie Griffin where he turns his head. <laughs> like, so I know it was almost just like he couldn't quite understand how I'd just done that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, but there is moments crazy. like that as well, Ricky. As you say, we do. It is easy to harp on, and like no one wants to listen to a podcast where we're going to be, you know, talking like, "Oh, this is brilliant, and this is amazing, and this is like the best thing ever that happened." Like you know, where it's forty-five minutes of us or an hour of us like not mentioning any of the issues because like yeah. naturally there is going to be issues no matter what game you play like it doesn't make a difference yeah, yeah. um and we're you know we're only always critical i think i think we're fairly down the line with our criticism that it's never 
it's never done in a put down way it's always done in a like this needs to be better this could be improved like because we love we love the series like otherwise we wouldn't spend the hours that we do you yeah. know doing content whether it's videos or you know editing all hours of the night or the team and the rest of the team are the same um no matter how we much we give out and stuff it is it is it is a love that you have for the series that's it's hard to shake you know what i mean it's hard to not to just turn it turn it off like so yeah. Yeah. um but yeah last week as well and i know this was this was something that we're kind of probably touch on every couple of weeks ways because i know it is it is kind of your your thing um but last week well, i wouldn't i wouldn't say it's i wouldn't say it's exclusively no not exclusively <laughs> but i mean for like on the podcast and stuff you know yeah um that's predominantly like you know a, a, a sports game you know pez game uh a pez specific podcast where we've kind of started to touch uh last week on like the mental health side of stuff and and stuff like that and there was such a like literally such a response to the podcast last week i think it's one of our most listened to podcasts um i think at, at like time we'd like over five or six hundred listens on it or whatever more i think wow. which was which is pretty decent in a week um and it was just such a the amount of people that were dming me i know a couple of people left youtube comments publicly and yeah. stuff um yeah. i know people got in touch with you wes but yeah. just we kind of just we kind of ricky on tonight i wanted to kind of go down a slightly different path of asking you ricky because you know you are a fairly big youtuber you've got a lot of subscribers i mean you know hopefully you're going to get the the silver plaque some soon um or the silver button that they send out or whatever um, yeah, it would be nice for 100k yeah 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 well, yeah about 18 away right now yeah 18K. you're 18 away so you'll get there but just to kind of ask you like in terms of like mental health and gaming as an escapism and stuff like what it's like for you in terms of like pressure to put out videos like working around your like your normal um, life I, I think I think the better way to probably say it is, is that what what type of a, a, a pressures do actually exist in a YouTube channel because I obviously am a streamer you know sometimes you feel a uh, almost like a, a, a relu- sometimes I feel reluctant to stream sometimes I feel like I owe people a stream you mm-hmm. know um what type of pressures exist for you as a as a youtuber obviously like we mentioned you do have a, a quite a substantial fan base i would imagine they're quite you know ravenous when a when a new release comes out or when a new video comes out so you know what what is it that kind of gets your attention when it comes to your mental health and, and more importantly how do you manage your mental health kind of day to day in terms of with youtube because obviously we know comment sections are can sometimes be a horrible place to live mm-hmm. um so uh, you know how 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 do you cope with those sorts of pressures? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've been through them all. To be honest, I, I've I've had good days, I've had bad days. Uh, generally, you now my comments are all pretty good. My subscribers are honestly fantastic. I mean, they they no one really slags me off or anything <laughs> like that. So you don't have to worry about it too much. And if they do, it is what it is. I'm not very good at actually commenting back, so I feel kind of bad sometimes. But <laughs> You know, when I first started YouTube, right, it was a it was a a little hobby. That was it. That was it. There was no pressures. It was just put a video out whenever. And then, you know, it slowly gets better and bigger and you start growing a little bit. These people that come in here and are like, can you do two, three videos or matches a video? I can't. You know, it takes me a couple of hours to do one match. If you want me to do two, three matches, I'm going to spend four hours editing and uploading and, and rendering. I have a wife. And three cats. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and that's just the <laughs> you know? cats that are the problem. <laughs> yeah, and it's, you know, uh, that's the thing. Some days, like, I've, I haven't got a video planned right now for tomorrow. But I feel like, yeah, I, I am owed, I owe people a video every single day. Mm. Yeah. You know, I do put a bit of pressure on myself. And I can say to the missus, look, I'm, I'm going to go and do a video. And then, like, four hours later, she's like, well, where are you? So, well, I'm still doing a video. You know, it's... Yeah. Things happen, and you just kind of have to realize that at the end of the day, if you if you skip a video or you forget it, then fine, you know, just yeah. that's what happens. Life is life. You can't you can't just sit there and worry about everything because it's it's pointless. I'm a very laid back guy. I'm very chill, and I try not to let things get to me. But that's not to say things haven't. But yeah. I think it's just got to the point now where I'm I I, I especially the weekends, you know, I. I sit down, I try and get some videos done. 
Yeah. Um, but if you want to see sit there and you start worrying about the comment section, I see that a lot as well, is especially people that start out. Um, and I saw Spoonie did it as well because he had a video that he got a lot of dislikes for. It was like nearly half dislikes and half likes. And I've seen his content. He does good stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I was trying to address it and talk about it. But I feel like it don't just don't worry about it. It's it's at the end of the day, everyone sat behind a computer desk, keyboard. They can say what they want. They can do what they want. You know, and they say sticks and stones and all that. I don't let things get to me. If someone dislikes something, they dislike it. It is what it is. You can only yeah. put out what you enjoy doing. And that's yeah. another thing. If you don't enjoy doing it anymore, is it worth doing it? You know, I've yeah. tried streaming. I've tried it. And I will give huge credit to Wes and everyone else that streams because it's not easy. Mm, nope. I can it's make mistakes not. on my videos. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can make mistakes. I can edit them out. And I've made plenty of them. But if you're streaming, you can't. You know, you just have to go through it and things could happen in your house. Who knows? I mean, you could get robbed in the middle of a stream. I mean, <laughs> these things could happen. Well, um, I had it. I had it. I had it. I think it was, it was, um, there was a tournament I was meant to play in. And literally all I heard from downstairs was, uh, Stu. Um, basically, for those listening, that is my actual name. A uh, Stu. Yeah. Um, I've had an accident. And I was like, oh, great. What's happened? Go down. <laughs> No, I go downstairs and it's like, oh, Mrs. Wes has actually accidentally cut her hand open with a knife. Mm. She didn't mean to. And I was like, could see blood dripping on the floor. And I was like, oh, my God, this is painful. This looks awful. And yeah, I was like, yeah, that stuff you can't edit out. I had to immediately stop the stream. Yeah, you have to. and you just you just default to a mode of actually I'm gonna go and look after people now and see you in a bit and um and it's the same thing for you know for for people listening to this podcast I may have look at Ricky or you know and go oh well he hasn't got any pressure look at him he's you know he, he commentates on Pez League he, he's got no pressures what's wrong with him and then all of a sudden you're like well actually no when it's like fundamental to what you're doing in terms of your actual, you know, your day-to-day life, you, there is pressure mm-hmm. on it. There's massive pressure on it. Same way with, you know, competitive esports in terms of people who go and play at tournaments and things like that. There's different levels of pressure, and it, and it is kind of you having to kind of figure out how to to manage that. So I think it's good yeah. that in a, in a way you've got that kind of disconnect where you can go. Do you know what? I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I like, you know, I, I you know, I, I pay attention to the comments in one sense but if they're negative it's just like eh do you know what i can move on and, and kind of and get and, and get better and you know that's ultimately is, a, is an incredibly powerful thing to have it's just like do you know what i don't care you know it's yeah. it's to be able to to be able to have that as a as a kind of a management kind of tool is, is awesome but I've, yeah but I've, I've learned as well because you know i look if it's a if it's a, if it's a constructive comment yeah and it actually means something, then I'll, I'll take it to heart. I always do. I, I don't always comment back. As I say, I'm terrible at it. But if it's something I think that I could improve on or I could do this, that, then I'll, I'll do it. If it's something that I can't, I'll generally comment back and I'll tell the person why and they'll understand. Yeah. You know, it's just trying to not let it get to you is always going to be the key. Because YouTube, streaming, anything you do like that, if you want to grow, and I know Spoonie said it on his, you have to put out daily content. Yeah. You just have to. Yeah. You can't go missing unless you've got 4 million subscribers, then fine. You can put out a video a week and no one cares. But, <laughs> you know, because you're making enough money off that one video, you know? But yeah. it's, you know, one's, how many people are in that luxury? Very, very few. Mm, so, yeah. you know, you just you have to do what you can. It yeah, I think it's something that, like, people don't, like, people, people don't really see. It's like I had something with Carrasco there the other day. Carrasco messaged me <coughs> and he was like, we were talking like we were kind of messaging and he he basically said like oh I need to kind of Skype you tonight or whatever and he Skyped me and he's like some guy was pretty much asking saying that there was a mistake in one of the kits and like in the in like V2 or whatever and it was like oh this collar is wrong or whatever and Krasko was like panicking about it like he was like oh I should have this done and I was like dude like re- like you know like relax like yeah. you know? and I know that's why he's one of like one of the best because he puts so much pressure on himself to have every detail right um but it's kind of like people don't understand and I was saying this to Carrasco like when people download the option file or whatever 
or it's when even if they're watching a video for you Ricky they don't they don't see the time you've spent editing they don't see the time you've spent rendering no. it out and making sure it's right and thumbnail like actually promoting it and whatever it's the same with you Wes yeah. you know they don't see yeah. you setting up they don't see you coming home you know, saying to the missus, like, I'm actually going to stream tonight. I'm planning, yeah. you know, she's planning her night around you not going to be streaming. Yeah. So she has to go and entertain herself. It's the same yeah. with my missus. Like, if I tell her, like, you know, like, I have four missed calls from her there. And, like, I'm recording the podcast. So I'm not going to answer her, obviously, when I'm recording this. But it's like, do you know, it is yeah. it is a thing where it's like, with Carrasco, I was like, that kid took you four hours or five hours to make. Somebody puts it on, you know, their game. It's installed and imported into their game in like ten seconds. Like they don't, you know, you don't see the the process of it. So yeah. it is hard, yeah. but then it's understandable from people as well because, you know, when they don't see it or whatever, and they don't do videos or they don't do streams, um, it is easy to pop off a comment and say, "Oh, your, you know, your mic was too low or your mic was too loud or oh, yeah. the screen was too bright or it was like, you know, it is easy and." we wouldn't obviously be anywhere without followers and like guys yeah. like that. And we have an excellent fan base on Pez universe as well, as Ricky, you said, but it is kind of, it is, it is hard. Like it is hard to kind of constantly be switched on and not let it kind of, you know, you have a shitty day mm. at work or you have a fight with the missus and it's like, well, I'm meant to be streaming tonight or I'm meant to do two videos. Tonight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, what do I do? Do I, you know, throw a strop and, you know, cancel it. And I don't know, like it is, it is hard. Like, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I've I've had arguments with the missus about it, you know, like literally. <laughs> yeah, she's got same. no, she's, I've no, I've had like serious like relationship problems <laughs> because I've spent too much time recording videos. Yeah, yeah, you know, and and Been she there. felt like well, you don't care, you don't come and watch TV with me, this, that, and the other, and it's like, like I'm like Cass, you understand, I have a YouTube channel, I'm trying to grow it, you know what I mean? Like, I'll put side, I'll, I'll put time for you, of course I will. I'm not going to spend every single minute of the day doing this. Um, but yeah, people don't see it. They don't see it, especially when you work 40 hours a week and then you spend another, what, yeah. 10, 15 hours. You know, Barry, you've been working your ass off on the edit file, the option file for months. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. you're doing that after you've worked a whole week. Mm -hmm. yeah. All you ask for, all you simply ask for as a creator or someone who puts a video out, an option file streaming is people to appreciate. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, come in and say thank yeah. you. Come in to give me a like, give me a follow. That's it. That's all we ask for. Yeah, it's not. And it shows it's not, they care. It's it's kind of respect. It kind of respecting the fact that you've put that time in. You know, you you might not necessarily be a fan of what I've done, but at least respect the fact that it's took me time to do this. So mm -hmm. you know that that I mean, and and to kind of just kind of point it back to, to Ricky's point you can only change uh, and, and this is something I've learned through my kind of my counseling sessions is you can only change what you can change you can't change you know I, if Ricky's pissed off at me I can't change that Ricky's pissed off at me I can only change that I don't piss him off again mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm, yeah. So it's like it's like I can only change what is going on with me I can't change somebody else to feel the way that I want them to feel so you know you know the fact that I, you know, I, I've I've spent a, a couple of streams streaming FIFA, and the first thing that people are saying is, "Have you left Pez behind?" I'm like, "No, no." <laughs> just changing it up. <laughs> Literally just changing it up. Literally yeah. just you know playing a different game. It's not. It's not. It's not. You know. That's that's it why we got consuming. days off. It's a time yeah. consuming hobby, like to have any content being put out. Like even the podcast, people don't. You know, people might be listening to this and they're saying, you know, it's just three guys getting on talking and chatting or whatever but like we need to re you know we need to arrange our nights like you know what i mean we need to like there's a there's a five hour four hour difference between us and you ricky so yeah. like you're straight in from work putting your evening off to do this podcast do you know and it's appreciated from us obviously but you know people don't really kind of kind of think that like oh they would have been organizing this since like sunday or monday do you know it's just kind of as you say it is it is kind of as you say Wes, it is the unseen style of things um that people kind of generally don't see but again you can't you can't like expect people to see that then either you know putting out when you put out something um but the one thing the one thing i would say just to kind of wrap it up because we could stay talking for the next two hours <laughs> and i'm already late but um <laughs> as usual but uh one thing to kind of say and that i would say is that like i think this kind of whole thing which you're like 
you know streaming fifa or you know ricky if you're dabbling in a different game or whatever and it's like you know you can like as gamers and as people that are getting up early to work have shit going on in their real life like mm-hmm. you're able to play other games you're able to consume different types of entertainment that just because we're like massive massive pez fans and put out a lot of pez content it doesn't mean that i can't play nba 2k or it doesn't mean i can't play modern warfare when it comes out or whatever do you know and i think yeah. i think that's a, an issue where it's like oh you're not playing pez do you hate the game now and it's like no i'm literally just playing a different Have game a like what's the problem yeah. you know yeah yeah. It's like I don't expect somebody listening to this podcast to not listen to any other po- podcast that with loyalty to us. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can listen to a hundred podcasts, like it doesn't make a difference, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much. I mean, unless you've anything else to say, boys, I'm gonna have to head anyway. Um, yeah, no, but, I, I haven't got much else to add. Uh, well, I say much first. else, but I ain't got. Yeah, no, it is strange. <laughs> you know? It is strange. Yeah. yeah, I've got nothing else to add. But um. Yeah, sound for coming on, Ricky. Appreciate it. Obviously, as I said, yeah, no you're just in the door from work, man. So I do appreciate that. Um, hopefully, we can get you back on again, maybe in a couple of weeks' time or whatever suits, um, because I'm sure people enjoy you coming on. You add a bit of prestige to the to the to the podcast <laughs> with that golden voice. But oh, thank you. Yeah. So um, I mean, that's pretty much it. I think I've nothing yep. else to talk about, lads. I'm just kind of I'm just yeah. going to think now how I'm going to number one tell the missus why I didn't answer her when she rang four times and number two <laughs> why I'm late when I said I wouldn't but anyway we'll get to that but um that's your problem now yeah <laughs> it's not it's not yours anyway but yeah so we'll probably have this up probably fairly quickly um and we will be back next week I will let the boys say their goodbyes in a second but yeah make sure and follow the podcast we are on iTunes SoundCloud and YouTube now as well Wes yeah I think we're up yeah, there yeah we're on YouTube, YouTube. So, um, yeah that's pretty much it and uh, yeah. I will let Wes say good luck and then Ricky or whoever you want to do I'm out alright peace yeah peace out guys see you later yeah thanks for having me guys and uh, yeah looking forward to seeing uh, what this patch does next week so till next time take care <laughs>